Corner, your host of Moments of Clarity. And I've got a good friend of mine, Dean Prescott, from the United Kingdom. Hi. Uh, and My name is we Warner. are I'm a licensed mental health counselor. We're going to be talking about. And I am also the host of a live radio we're talk gonna be show talking about Home. so many things anxiety, um, the pandemic, and everything. And first, I would like to show you I have um, a little video I'd like to play and start the show like that. So stay with us and we'll be right back. Enjoy. Don't put yourself down, time for a change. Believe in yourself, time to rearrange. Be your best friend, bring hope to your day. Lose your critic, get out of your way. Now it clicks, moments of clarity. Now I hear moments of clarity. Now I get it, moments of clarity. To yourself, be kind, it will please your mind. Find your joy, trust in you. Put in the time, you'll see how you grow. Many kinds of love, you get to define. Find self-love, you're so alive. Now it clicks, moments of clarity. Now I hear, moments of clarity. Now I get it, moments of clarity. And we're back. And hope you enjoyed that. I would play live, I think it did. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Ed in the just in the house, and we're just going to go by here on the Tan Talk Radio and Network, only in America. Is sponsored by My Pillow. Mike Lindell's best offers are back. Buy I one premium my... My Pillow and get the second one oh, free. My it's... Pillows are made in the USA and come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. Order online at mypillow.com. Use promo code Bill. That's promo code B I L L. Again, that's mypillow.com. Promo code Bill. Did you ever think about hosting your very own radio show? Here's how. Hey, Tampa Bay. Did you know you can have a one-hour program on the Tan Talk? And if you'd be so kind to unmute before our ads happen, that would be before the show starts. That'd be great. So, James, I'm so excited to, to talk about everything. And I love your transparency on anxiety and everything. And you're in England and... Um, is is England on lockdown right now? Are you on quarantine? We're in these this thing called like tears. So we had a month long okay. lockdown in December, which is our second month long, which is our second lockdown, and now we have these tears. So different different regions of the country um, lockdown in different to different levels depending on how severe it is, and it's a bit confusing. Uh, for people. Which tier are you in? I think we have that in America too, but um, I don't know which tier we've ever hit, to be honest. We're, we're there's a few states two. completely on lockdown, except yeah, for we're in tier two, so we're allowed to go out and some things are open and whatever, as long as we obviously use social distance and wear masks. Um, but yeah, there's a danger we could go to tier three, which is kind of just like normal lockdown. Um, like So there's a danger because cases are going up in London, which is where I live. So uh, yeah, that's it's kind of the moment. So I'm home, I'm at home a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that like it's and you live by yourself, right? So that gets a what? Yeah, kind of. Um, I live in a kind of a top floor flat uh, in a house that um, other members of my family live in, um, but I don't obviously I don't see them like all the time. So it's kind of like living on my own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, during quarantine, you can. On a second, Ed, I think it's time for us to start at. If you, uh, Hi, um, Harvey. Please listen to the Kelly it. Kelly Show every Monday That's starting it. at 5 p.m. They Thank need you. to feel worthy. The good, the 
Hello. Tune in to uh, Oldies Channel uh, Radio every Friday uh, evening from 7 to 9 p.m. Do you remember the 50s, 60s, and 70s? Well, we'll rain. be playing the greatest hits as well as plenty of songs from the B-side. Right. This show is sure to bring back memories. So pull out your record collection, adjust your antenna, and listen to Oldies Channel Radio Fridays from 7 to 9 p.m. right here on the Tan Talk Radio Network. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Welcome to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Werner, licensed mental health counselor in the state of Florida. Moments of Clarity's mission is to educate and end the stigma on mental health through the inspirational stories of our exceptional guests. You can join in the show by calling Tiffany toll free at 866 826 1340 or on Facebook and Twitter at MOC with Tiffany. Now, here's Tiffany Werner. Hi, and thank you so much for listening to Home Clarity. My name is Tiffany Werner. I am a licensed mental health counselor, and I'm your host. And today we're going to be talking about anxiety and how sometimes our anxieties have their own anxieties and can be triggered by so many things. And before we start the show and I introduce my guest, I always like to say hi to Ed, who helps run the show and at Tantuck Radio and, and always there for me. So going on six years, or whenever we're close to. Hi, Ed. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How are things going for you? Uh, it's funny you talking about that uh, little anxiety thing. I've seen uh, a little bit of relief from people some around here that um, because this vaccine is now going to be ready sometime tomorrow, I think uh, the first ones will go out. And uh, so there's that light that's at the end of the tunnel and it could be more if, if the other uh, two companies are also approved and you triple the amount that you can push out, get this thing over with. Yeah, Finally. I mean, I'd be optimistic, but then there's a lot of people that have concerns about vaccinations in general, first of all. Right. And then also it's so new that a lot of people are anxious to take it until they see how it affects other people you know, down the road too. You know, well, like I said, yeah. my, my father, and my uncle died from Agent Orange in Vietnam War and died from cancer years later. And then they're giving it to all our first responders first all the essential workers, but if the vaccine has the negative effect, they're killing off all the people that need, are going to help us. Well, <laughs> yeah. us too. So I don't know. In and this case, Dr. I'm in this, in this case, I'm going to trust the scientists on this. Yeah. Johnson and Johnson's one of them but the, from baby products to quarantine vaccinations, but then their baby powder mm. causes cancer. Apparently <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I'm looking forward to life going back the way it was. And uh, I don't know how long that's going to take for people to get comfortable around each other. But um, that's why we're talking about anxiety and how all of this has affected us. I mean, who thought we'd live through this? You know, right. 11 was bad enough. And then and then <laughs> school shootings and people don't even talk about that anymore. And um, not even school shootings, but massacres and Las Vegas and Pulse and all of that and all these horrible things. And then, and then this, and I mean, these are things that, that we've heard of in the past, you know, with polio and flu and chicken box and things now, now this, it's surreal that we're even living through this in 2020, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's some good things that have happened this year, and not many, but some good things. I mean, but we don't we don't hear much about them, and they're not stressed a lot uh, in the media. The the fact that a major, major, major uh, child sex ring has been broken up, you know, and there's hundreds of kids that have been, you know, freed from from these animals and whatnot. Uh, but you don't hear much about that. If it were any other year, it'd be probably the, right on top there. So. Mm-hmm. And the, the Black Lives Matter movement and mm-hmm. the horrible thing mm-hmm. that happened to George Floyd and and it's ongoing. Twenty twenty has been a, a nonstop, just and it's good and a bad. Of, a lot of bad stuff, but good things always. In my opinion, mm-hmm. a lot of good things come out of bad situations. We find out what to do about it, 
I mean, we figured out how to go virtual so we could share the show right. because of the quarantine. Um, a lot of people are getting more creative and writing more books um, being locked down. A lot of people are you know, self-discovering, repairing relationships, seeking counseling. Mental health has been more more of a thing rather than a stigma. It's starting to end the stigma because people are starting to see the anxiety and depression and isolation and all of these things are real. And so there's, I mean, at least coming from me, there's a lot of things that that are beneficial. You know how like when a lot of babies are born nine months after a hurricane, imagine how many are being born because of the lockdown and quarantine. <laughs> Uh, or if you had stock in zoom or toilet paper you're picking out a place in the bahamas i know i know i'm I'm thinking about like cruise lines right now movie theaters um all the things that we can't do imagine Mm. imagine all of these things that um people should be buying stock in now you know disney world universal a lot of things but you're right to try to be optimistic, but good, good does come out of bad things. And I know that I wouldn't be doing the show if I didn't live through bad things. I wouldn't be a therapist. So that's. It'll make you appreciate those things all the much more when they're finally back. Very true. I'm going to give you a bell for that. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Ed. And mm-hmm. you know, James Prescott. So yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Hi, Ed. So I, yeah. Yeah. Um, James has been on before, and um, now you guys get to see what each other look like, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope it didn't disappoint you. <laughs> well, I think he's, yeah, maybe. He, no, I guess you haven't seen it because before. <laughs> no, we've seen each other. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, yeah, because I think it was because it's always on Skype. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's why. Yeah. Normally. So, so, yeah. So, it's nice for you guys to see each other finally. So let's get to the show. We're talking about um, anxiety. And my guest here is is from the United Kingdom, England. We were kind of talking about that before the show started. And, um, and is an author, a motivational speaker. He hosts his own podcast. And we're going to get into all that. And welcome to Moments of Clarity, James Prescott. Thank you. It's good to be here, Tiffany. It's nice to have you. And he's also a member of the Moments of Clarity team. I've known him for quite some time, and I always appreciate his transparency and honesty about very difficult topics. So this should be a very good show. Hmm. So let's start with, and you know, you get a bell, you know, you've been on the show before, but (laughs) when did you think you found your moment of clarity where you wanted to start speaking out about this, the mental health? I think, I think when I started to do, uh, a lot of work on my own mental health. Uh, when I, you know, when I, you know, I was going, I, I was kind of, I'd spent 15 years not really processing grief and trauma that I'd been through when I was younger. And I started to deal with it. I started to, you know, see specialists, see spiritual directors, therapists, and all of that. I started to work on it. I started to educate myself on mental health and actually understand myself better and some of the conditions that I had. And as I, as I did that, I began to realize there was a lot of stigma around mental health mm. and, and a lack of awareness and a lack of education about it. And I, I just started to, I just started to tell my own story on social media and some of the things I was writing as well. Uh, and, uh, and obviously in my podcast. And yeah, I just ended up connecting with a few people who were, who were doing the same work like you. And, uh, and that's kind of how it happened, really. It kind of just um, evolved and then kind of snowballed, yeah. And I, yeah, it's really, really important. It's more, now more than ever. So then you found your moment of clarity, right? Yeah. Give me a chance to ring the bell. Come on, James. I found, my, <laughs> I found, I found my moment of clarity, I guess, when <laughs> I had my, I had, I had, I had my low point, my lowest point, um, where I kind of was. I had suicidal ideation and I realized that I that all the other things that I've been I've been I've been covering up my grief and trauma with were kind of empty and meaningless and that I actually had to do something about it and that was the beginning of my kind of real growth and transformation that was that was like a moment of clarity it was yeah thank you for that. <laughs> behind you. Earn a bell every time I talk yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a sign behind you on your, and it, I can see it says life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And it's so yes. true. And we have to make ourselves uncomfortable when we're anxious to get rid of those intrusive thoughts and things like that. And I know from knowing you, not to put you on the spot here, but you still get triggered easily and mm-hmm. insecure or wondering if your thoughts are intrusive or, or um, the real. Um, how, do you, how do you cope with those things? Well, in the last two years, I've learned um, practices and self-care. Uh, yeah, self-care practices that can help with that. Um, I, you know, doing a lot of embodiment coaching and therapy and internal family systems therapy, IFS therapy, um, which kind of means you go into your brain, you look and look at internal managers and uh, exiles and things like that. It's quite complicated to explain, but um, you just, you get to know yourself and you connect with yourself and you realize what practices can help your mental health. So I set those things up. I know like journaling is a big one for me. Mm. So if I'm journaling every day, yeah, that probably made you an author. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. I'm a writer. Um, yeah, if I if I if I journal every day and journal out my emotions, my 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 emotional mental health is better. Yes. Uh, and if I get triggered, I know I instinctively now know, intuitively almost know what I need to do to help myself. So I reach out to like trusted friends who I know will will be there for me. I who who I've given permission to be there for me and I and know that I will always share with them sometimes I go on social media and talk about it and share it because I want other people to know they're not alone uh, um, and I have coaches and I have a therapist who I can reach out to so I, I, I know instinctively almost intuitively to, to do that when I get triggered um, because you can't stop yourself getting triggered that's still going to happen uh, when you've got a trigger yeah. you, it's just having the awareness of what it is and how you can manage your response to that trigger. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so can you tell us, just to share, and not interrupt, but I want to, I don't want you to move on past that subject. Can you share with us something like that is one of your most common triggers, that intrusive thoughts or something, and not just journaling or anything, but you know, it's, it's an invasive thought that's not real, but it's real to you. And it, it's hard to shake. How do you, what would you say your most intrusive thought is and then what do you do besides journal like how do you get that from becoming a, an obsession or a compulsion or from yeah. doing something negative i think things that remind me when i'm lonely um that remind me that i'm on my own can trigger me mm. um, and what are some of those things it can be anything it can be really small things like i'm a highly sensitive person so when I'm vulnerable, I'm more, I'm not only am I more sensitive than everyone else, but I'm kind of hypersensitive. So anything can trigger me. So if I see like, if I'm vulnerable and feeling lonely, and then I see some people posting about their happiness on, on Twitter, like like four, four or five people in one day, this, this happened once. And although I was happy for them, inside I was really, really triggered. I was really, I went into myself. I felt really, really low and because uh, it triggered all that, all that, all those kind of reminders that oh, I'm lonely. I'm on my own. I haven't got anybody. They've got somebody, uh, and I'm kind of trapped in my house. And then you go into this spiral. You know, I'm kind of I feel trapped in in my house. I can't go out and do things that I want to do. And it just it just spirals out of control. And but you got to tell you something. First of all, what people post on social media is a bunch of um, yeah, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, nobody's going to sit there and go, I hate myself today. I mean, not nobody, but yeah, yeah. people are more yeah. likely to have a dynamic moment or a happy family moment where they're not fighting with each other or whatever. And they post that they don't sit there and post, Oh my gosh, the kids are driving me nuts or my husband or wife or whatever. Like they just don't post that. And so when they post, it's like, it's all a facade for the most part. Um, and then there's people like you that will post the truth and say, you're not alone, but then you compare yourselves to those that I think are full of BS, yeah. you know? And that's not and healthy. I give, you, I give you credit for that. We have a caller. We have a caller, Joe. Hi, Joe. Thanks for calling in. Welcome to Moments of Clarity. Hi, Joe. 
Hello, hello, James. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear you know, your Joe. voice. Yes. Hi, James. Yeah, hi, Jay. <laughs> Good to hear from you. How you doing, sir? Hey, listen, um, I came in late because my internet went down. We're having a storm here in Iowa. And so I heard a, a little bit about the triggers and how you work through it. And I just want to share, first of all, and I've talked to Tiffany about this. And she's helped me work through some things, right? For years, I would avoid going around particular people because I, I, I come to understand it would trigger me, you know. But now I'm at a point where, I mean, sometimes, like, if I go to a wedding reception and people get drunk and they start acting stupid, that would set me off, right? That was a trigger for me because I used to be one of those people, but I no longer partake in alcohol. And the ignorant That's people, crazy. the drunk people were just, so I, I learned how to deal with that. Mm. But I'm going to be really honest with you. I'm going to be honest. I don't have a ton of people around me to help me when I'm in one of those situations. So if you're in a situation where you become triggered and the tools that you implemented in the past don't work, then what? Well, that you have to find new, new coping skills. Yeah, I know, but at the moment, at the moment of that, you know, in that situation, you know, it's either fight or flee, right? Fight, so fight or freeze. But yeah, I mean, I have my own triggers. I suffer with anxiety as well, and some intrusive thoughts, and you never see them coming. Anything can do that. Um, when you're aware of your own mind. And you start to realize and really spend time getting to know yourself, not comparing yourself to others, getting to know yourself and say, this is different, you know, or this doesn't seem like the normal me, then that's when you can start to talk yourself out of it. Because anxiety is a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior. We are born with a certain level of anxiety, but we can let it get out of control to phobias or OCD or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, OCD is a real thing, but how we handle anxiety and, and, and some anxious thoughts and certain phobias um, are they're escalated from just anxiety or fear of a panic attack or anxieties having their own anxieties. And that we, we have to learn ourselves and have those coping skills to breathe, to talk ourselves down and say that we're not gonna have another panic attack. We're, we're worrying about something that's not there or to like James said earlier, call a friend and, you know, have a rational conversation where you can kind of ground yourself again with James yeah. ongoing thing with this chess match and he keeps kicking my butt. And if I didn't have <laughs> self-esteem issues, it would really hurt my feelings. <laughs> he doesn't win every well, you know, time, not yeah. every time, but a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You see, I get, insecure, I get insecure about things like that as well. Like, you know, I've got a competitive side too. Like, I mean, triggers normally come from a wound that we have, like a trauma wound. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be anything. Like, it can be abandonment or grief. Right. I have an abandonment. I want to get into that too. You know, yeah. so when before somebody you get into that, silent, James, with, before you get into the abandonment thing, we have to, I, I wanted to get into that, but we have to take a break. So. Okay. Let's get that end of that in the second segment. But Joe, thanks for calling in. That was great. Yeah, and thanks for watching and thanks for being here. It's time okay, for our, it is time for our second break. And um first break. No, first break. Thanks, Ed. First break. <laughs> it's time for our first break. And we will be back with moments of clarity in just a moment. Please stay tuned. You're listening to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Werner. We welcome your input at 866-826-1340. Tiffany will be right back after this. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Has your marriage or relationship lost that connection? Are you contemplating divorce, but you still love your partner and are living like roommates just because life got in the way? You're not alone. 
Many relationships prematurely wither away. It's a tragedy to let years of life spent together become meaningless due to not knowing what to do about it. At Jagarundi Shores, we have taken decades of experience treating couples and applying it to providing an exotic therapeutic retreat with not only therapy, but with targeted experiences with your partner. This breakthrough combination reignites the flame through exotic tropical excursions, romantic activities, and licensed therapy sessions, unlike anything else available. Check out our website at jagarundeshores.com to view our specialized retreat packages. Don't let love slip away when you can be happy again. Tomorrow is promised to no one. Call now, 918-774-3242. That's 918-774-3242. Hi, this is Tiffany Warner, your host of Moments of Clarity. Living with a mental health disorder is not easy. If you or someone you know are struggling with this, please know it's so important to seek treatment, and I'm here to help. Please visit the website at momentsofclaritywithtiffany.com to view blog posts and resources on this site to help educate and inspire you to take action because there's no shame in seeking help with mental health. While you're there, please take a few seconds to sign up for my email list. You'll get some extremely valuable educational and entertaining content that can be sent right to your inbox each week. Plus, you'll also get instant and free access to my guide on managing your anxiety. You can also follow me on Twitter at MOC with Tiffany and at Facebook at Tiffany Warner. And once again, the website is momentsofclaritywithtiffany.com. Thank you so much for your support and for listening to your show because change can only come when we stand together as one. Are you looking for a great book? If you like to root for the underdog, Joe Potosi's book is a book for you. A real American odyssey that will grab your attention with its fast moving narrative. You won't be able to put this masterpiece down. When the Dust Settled by Joe Potosi. Go to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or Zulin Press. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. We are back to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Werner. To join in the discussion, call 866 826 1340. Now, here's Tiffany Werner. Hi, and welcome back. And if you're just tuning in, this is Moments of Clarity. My name is Tiffany Warner. I am a licensed mental counselor, and I'm your host. Today, we're talking about anxiety and pandemic and how our anxieties have anxieties and how they can be triggered and so much more with my special guest from the United Kingdom, London, and you know, a friend, my friend across the pond, and, and chess competitor, <laughs> and I don't let you win to make you feel better. No, <laughs> Just kick no, my butt. Anyway. So, <laughs> author and motivational speaker. Welcome back, James Prescott. Uh, hi, Tiffany. Hi, everyone. And I got to tell you, with hypersensitivity and high anxiety, and you still are an author, and you're doing this as a guest virtually and a, a podcast host and motivational yeah. speaker. I got to give you props because with those yeah. things getting in the way it doesn't stop you from following your dream so go that that's great yeah yeah that's yeah i mean yeah i've done 62 podcasts this year i think um yeah uh, which is more than i've ever done in a year i started doing two a week because um, i had so many recorded like i just had an overload of, of things recorded for the, for the podcast which is called the poem podcast by the way poem with an a on the end um yeah poem with an um, a on, the end. on that note ed i wonder if there's an easy way to count how many shows moments of clarity has had since 2015 without actually having to like count if you have any statistics where it just shows how many shows that'd be interesting to know because we used to be on three times a week at one point twice a week once a week <laughs> two hours. it's gone a long way but but that would be interesting to know, Ed. I, I'm sure we've reached landmarks and milestones together. Just something to be curious about. But mm. and our journey is not over. It stuck with me for a little while. I'm hoping to aim for 10 years at least. But anyway, so before we went to break, we we're going to talk about how we're triggered from things such as fear of abandonment. If we've lost someone in the past that was very close to us, especially if it was a sudden death, um, suicide or an instant death, brain aneurysm, I lost my mom or um, even um, sudden breakup or divorce or anything. Um, Anything could be 
um, a trigger for anxiety. It's a root cause of anxiety is fear of abandonment, fear of intimacy is another one, fear of the unknown, fear of death and dying, fear of contamination, fear, fear this is a lot of them. Um, this pandemic I know is triggering a lot of people's fear of contamination, anxiety. And, um, and then a lot of people with obsessive compulsive disorder are saying in counseling, well, now the world knows how we feel, <laughs> fear of contamination. And that's how they feel on an everyday basis though. So um, with the fear of abandonment, I can relate to you, but I'll let you go, James. Like that one is a big trigger. Yeah, it's a big trigger for me because, uh because I, my mother died when I was 20, 23, sorry. So 20 years, 20 years ago, just over 20 years ago. Uh, also went through a bit of a childhood trauma where I was a bit neglected. Um, I've been betrayed by people in the past, stabbed in the back, by people I really trusted. Uh, so I've got multiple abandonment wounds, multiple experiences of grief. One, obviously, in particular, um, which was very big, um, and yeah, it, it makes it more difficult for you to trust people. It makes it more difficult for you to believe that people genuinely care about you and they're not going to betray you. Uh, and, you know, especially when you're highly sensitive and an overthinker like I am, uh, it means that sometimes, like, I catch myself when I'm talking to somebody and they suddenly go silent and disappear. I don't hear from them for ages. My mind can go into you know, dark places, like... You know, what, have they abandoned me? Have they forgotten me? Do, 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 you know, is, well, what's happened? You know, uh, and I had to do a lot of work with my therapist on that uh, and unlearning that. I'm in a much better place now with that, and that I don't, I don't make that assumption anymore. And um, I still feel it. I still feel the trigger, um, but I don't respond to it in yeah. the same way. Um, I know. I, I've seen you go through it with me a couple times, and be... yeah, exactly. And I didn't even do anything. However, um, on the flip side, I don't know even what causes, but when I want to, it's not even a sense of if they do, when I get betrayed by someone, I don't care who it is, I cut them out. I don't want to go through it again. If, so, if I see that someone's capable of actually purposely or intentionally hurting me, I just delete them. It's like, what's the point? What's that quote? Do it once, shame on you. Do it twice, shame on me. I'll give people that chance. It depends. I mean, it's got to be pretty severe to like break my trust or have me do that though. But you know, um, yeah. an intentional betrayal on purpose and mm. and just because they we're trying to. That's that's a cutoff point for me. It takes a lot to get me mad, but that's one of them. Yeah. I don't like fair weathered friends, but I definitely don't like those that when they are mad will go out to harm somebody or that or myself. Yeah, it's it's but it's, it's not assuming I don't assume like you do or worry about it because it actually has to happen. When <laughs> then you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, I've done a lot of work on it now, so it doesn't it doesn't happen anymore, you know. Uh, I mean, there's like it happened recently. One, one of my friends, we we'd arranged to to to, to Zoom, uh, and I didn't show, and I didn't get any messages from them. But I didn't I didn't get anxious about it. I didn't I didn't message them. Um, I just said I just like sent a quick message saying hope hope you're okay, hope everything's all right. I'll talk to you soon, kind of thing. And I had a feeling something was wrong, and. Uh, intuitively kind of felt something was wrong uh, and then they messaged me a, a few days later saying they'd been in the hospital and they'd been ill and they hadn't had their phone they hadn't been able to contact anybody uh, and yeah so there was a perfectly reasonable explanation for it you know um, and sometimes people just just get busy with their lives they just have things to do um, sometimes people are just too stressed you know it's just we just have to we have to trust people, um, but it's not easy when you when you've got an abandonment wound. You have to do work on that wound so that you don't get so that you don't respond to that trigger in the same way. Mm -hmm. What I think is how I, I look at it is I'd rather I'd rather give it a shot and put my guard down and make friends with somebody or you know trust them and then have them let me down and you know move on then have my guard up and question someone and not make a friend or a trusted colleague or someone that 
become special in my life because I have my guard up and I miss out on a good opportunity or a great relationship because of fear of that happening again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. You've got to put yourself out there and have relationships. And um, relationships aren't easy anyway. Even if there's friendships, you know, aren't easy. Um, so uh, you have to you have to trust the other person. You have to work things through sometimes. Like you know, I've had to work things through with friends before and discuss discuss this stuff with friends. And mm. uh, and that actually deepens your friendship if you're honest with each other. Yeah. About it. So absolutely. And there's a lot of people that are um, their guards up because of fear of being judged. Yeah. Like they um, don't want to do that deep conversation. They're afraid that people won't like them if they know who they really are, which in my case, I actually like people for being transparent because of their faults. <laughs> and it makes it more real. It makes me more comfortable around them because I know that they're being honest with themselves and, and making themselves vulnerable like with me helps me be vulnerable with them too, you know? But yeah. um, a lot of people are afraid and it makes them nervous at parties or nervous in general and socializing because of fear of what someone might be thinking about them when there's a lot of people like what I just said, like them for being them. And who would want a friend that you can't be yourself around anyway? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's no point in... And having, you know, I mean, you're not, to me, a friend is somebody who you can be your complete self with and be vulnerable with and be honest with. Uh, People are going to judge you no matter what. You can be perfect in your whatever perfect is. And they're going to be like, oh my gosh, they think she's so perfect or whatever. Uh, you could be not perfect. You could be too skinny. You could be too overweight. You could be too smart. Not smart enough. Too funny. Not funny enough. Or sarcastic people don't like i don't know and that's why there's so many different types of people not everyone's going to get along you know um but and people will judge each other but the ones that won't judge you are the ones that you get to know and you want to keep around because they're they're like and i hate the word crazy but i'm going to use it in a kind of nice way but your type of crazy you know what i mean like yeah. We all have our friends that are kind of crazy, like, and not like, I'm mean, in a whole stigma term, but you know what I mean? Like, I like people that are my kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, I get, you, I get what you mean exactly when you use that term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. that. Yeah, it'll be kind of cuckoo. Like, and that's what's fun. I think, I think uh, that's people that try too hard to appease others get boring, or people that, I don't know. Yeah. I like people that are different and unique and have their quirks. I like them for their quirks, not in spite of them. That's right. Yeah, we're all um, we all have our imperfections. We all have our weaknesses. We all have uh, we all have wounds. All of us. Mm -hmm. And the fear of abandonment you and I have in common. We both lost our parents, or my mo our mothers, and. And when you lose somebody like that, and then you get a trigger of a potential loss, it could trigger things. And when I say trigger, I mean, you start getting worried or oversensitive when somebody's going on vacation or um, you're, you're not hearing back from a friend or I don't know, there's so many different kinds of triggers or responses to that. But um, like I can't ever go to sleep without angry with my kids. Like it's a thing. Like, Mm. because I mean that's what happened and I woke up and my mom was lying on the floor and never woke up so yeah. I have a thing where we don't go we, in my house we don't go to bed mad we just don't that's good. count on a door good. and make sure they talk to me even if they don't want to because they're mad <laughs> you're not going to sleep until we talk this out but that's good. I like that yeah yeah. But if I didn't go through what I went through, I don't know that it'd be in my head like that, you know? Yeah. And yeah. sometimes people need to sleep it off, but at least we could have that heart to heart where, look, we're going to talk about this tomorrow, but I love you and good night. And that's all I need. And then not the whole conversation or whatever. Yeah. And then we could shelf it and then, you know, think about it and then calm down and then have a talk, you know, but at least... Good night, love you. Talk to you tomorrow, kind of deal. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It, yeah, you, you can have boundaries with friends where, um, yeah, I don't like to leave things on bad terms with people either. Okay. It, um, and James, your mom, she passed away from asthma, right? Yes. Okay, so she had, and this was before COVID. And how does it make you feel with when that's a high risk situation, or high risk for COVID and in, in, um, respiratory, um, what were those machines um, when they they get on the, um, the breathing uh, machine? What's that called? Yeah. I, I, what is that called? Is, we hear it all the time. And yeah, I remember like, my, my mom had one. Had one. Um, but, but, People yeah. are not taking it seriously. Asthma is so common. People are dying all the time because if you catch, I think it's defibrillator or um, whatever. Um, I know it's just. Yeah, it's, I know. I, I got it. It's in my head. I can't. I just can't. Talking about the colored, respirators. The respirators, but I think they're calling it something else. The machine. So, yeah, yeah, there is. Is it? Yeah, I. I oh, I Callers can't. call in 866-826-1340. 866-826-1340. Or leave it in the comments on Facebook, but if I'm wrong, yeah, ventilator, ventilator, maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind Regardless, of anyway, it's how does that make you feel when your mother passed away from asthma, an asthma attack, mm. it just before COVID, and people are being, um, it, yeah, I mean, that aren't wearing masks are being inconsiderate for people that might yeah. catch it and die, such as that. How does that feel? Like, what mm. would you say? It makes me really angry. I, I'll be honest about that. I, you know, people can't. You know, there's science there that, that all the science like shows you what you need to do. The instructions are really clear. Um, if, you know, it's and it's not a big sacrifice to wear a mask. It, it's not. You know, um, it's not like some infringement on our freedom. You know, so it's and it's to protect other people. You know, and yeah, I mean, my my dad, my dad is now in his seventies and he's he's a, he's vulnerable. Right, um, he has Parkinson's. Um, he, he's had a few respiratory problems as well, so he's fine. book. So, I think it's called know. a ventilator. Thank you, Robert. Uh, no, he, I mean, he hasn't got like a proper con a condition, but I know what we were saying he, before. Someone he helped with that. You know, and so he's more vulnerable, and so I don't want him to. I don't want him to, to catch it because it could kill him. And so people go out and flagrantly and just don't care. That makes me really angry. And yeah, I mean, my mother would be would be if she was alive now, would be yeah very high risk. I mean, really high risk. She'd probably be shielding, you know, not able to go out at all uh, because if she got it, she'd be dead. I mean, without a you know, question, you know, if she'd been alive now and got it, she would die from it. There's no question about that. Um, and for the chronic for smoke, very serious. So yeah, so. Um, yeah, you, you kind of learn lessons from the, from trauma as well, like uh, from that kind of thing. And yeah, you that's why I'm more vigilant, I think, because you know I don't want people to I don't want other people to go through what I went through. I don't want people to lose their parents unnecessarily. You know, when it's when it's preventable, when you can when you can take precautions and stop it. You know, um, mm -hmm. and people just right, don't... we we know what it's like to lose people, and we don't want people to have to unfortunately needless yeah. to go through that just by being irresponsible we have an, it's time for our second break and um and when we come back we we'll to talk more about this and um and i really would like callers to call in 866-826-1340 866-826-1340 anxiety loss are you triggered by anything and how does it affect you? And let's help with some coping skills. 866-826-1340. We'll be taking our second break right now and we'll be back with Moments of Clarity in just a moment. Please stay tuned. We will return to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Warner after these messages. This is the Tam Talk Radio Network. Has your marriage or relationship lost that connection? Are you contemplating divorce, but you still love your partner and are living like roommates just because life got in the way? You're not alone. Many relationships prematurely wither away. It's a tragedy to let years of life spent together become meaningless due to not knowing what to do about it. At Jagarundi Shores, 
we have taken decades of experience treating couples and applying it to providing an exotic therapeutic retreat with not only therapy, but with targeted experiences with your partner. This breakthrough combination reignites the flame through exotic tropical excursions, romantic activities, and licensed therapy sessions, unlike anything else available. Check out our website at jagarundeshores.com to view our specialized retreat packages. Don't let love slip away when you can be happy again. Tomorrow is promised to no one. Call now, 918-774-3242. That's 918-774-3242. Do you ask yourself any of these questions? Will I ever be able to get out of debt? Will I ever be able to retire? How am I going to pay for my children's education? How do I begin saving for my family's future? And if something were to happen to me, will my family be taken care of? Have you struggled in finding the answers? Forever Forward Financial can help answer these and many more questions about your financial future by teaching you how money works, by providing you the financial education you seek, by assisting you in making the right retirement or educational decisions that are best for you and your family, and by helping you take the necessary steps in establishing and meeting your financial goals. Please call us today and schedule your complimentary no-obligation meeting to discuss your needs and concerns. The number 727-422-7761. Hi, this is Tiffany Warner, your host of Moments of Clarity. Living with a mental health disorder is not easy. If you or someone you know are struggling with this, please know it's so important to seek treatment and I'm here to help. Please visit the website at momentsofclaritywithtiffany.com to view blog posts and resources on this site to help educate and inspire you to take action because there's no shame in seeking help for mental health. While you're there, please take a few seconds to sign up for my email list. You'll get some extremely valuable educational and entertaining content that can be sent right to your inbox each week. Plus, you'll also get instant and free access to my guide on managing your anxiety. You can also follow me on Twitter at MOC with Tiffany and at Facebook at Tiffany Warner. And once again, the website is momentsofclaritywithtiffany.com. Thank you so much for your support and for listening to your show because change can only come when we stand together as one. Hi, this is Tiffany Warner, your host of Moments of Clarity. I'd like to give a shout out to musician songwriter Don Lawson, who wrote, produced, and performed all the vocals and instruments on my Moments of Clarity theme song. Don gained his inspiration as a mental health counselor himself. He's always looking for artists to record his songs, and you can hear more of Don's music at ReverbNation.com forward slash Don Lawson. You can also check him out on Twitter at Don Lawson Music. Thank you so much, Don, for your contribution to Moments of Clarity and ending the stigma on mental health. It's awesome. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Now back to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Werner, licensed mental health counselor. To engage in the conversation, call 866 826 1340. Here's Tiffany. Hi, and welcome back. This is Tiffany Werner. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, and I'm your host. And we've had a wonderful show talking about triggers, anxiety everything going on in the world with a special guest that has been very honest and transparent about how he suffers with anxiety, hypersensitivity and triggers. And welcome back to Moments of Clarity, James Prescott. Hi again. Yeah, it's good to be here. Welcome callers to call in 866-826-1340. 866-826-1340. And we love live callers. This radio station loves live live callers. And when you call in, say hi to Ed. But we're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. And um, if you would rather post a comment there, we will follow up as soon as we can too as well. But anyway, so um, before the break, and we only got 10 minutes. So, um, but the pandemic, everything, James, um, I'm going to let you take the lead on what you'd like to share about how this has affected you. And I'm sure you are not alone on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, the pandemic uh, has been, well, there was already a mental health crisis going on, I think. Um, we of course. About it as well. has been. Um, but the pandemic has kind of amplified that. Um, lots of people staying at home, lots of people um, not, uh, not you know, having to give up basically their old life old routines um which is which is grief you know and 
some people losing their jobs, some people losing loved ones. Um, some people stuck indoors with people they want to divorce. Exactly. Yeah. That's <laughs> I feel right. worse for them. We file divorce, and then all of a sudden lockdown happens, and they're like, "Yeah." And then single people who live on their own. Yes. Being on their own a lot, and not having any human contact or having any physical contact. I mean, me, I, I've had limited physical contact, you know, but not not much. Uh, and you know, and all of those things are not good for your mental health. And it's understandable this year if people are struggling with their mental health and, you know, people who are suffering with, you know, depression or low moods or anxiety or, you know, people could be getting That's triggered. Um, That's people are people are during the day. Yeah. A lot. I have an adult support group and it's one of the main things. A lot of people who weren't alcoholics, they're drinking out of boredom from being furloughed or unemployed or whatever, yeah. stuck inside and, not knowing what to do because a lot of stuff is closed and finding hobbies and things like that. I, yeah. That's a big one. Even I had to give up my, I still have my beautiful office in Safety Harbor, but I haven't been there since March. I've been doing everything virtually. And, and some of my clients I haven't met in person yet. <laughs> it's like, it's, a, it's, weird um because before this i would love to hope someone was you know suffering with trauma i would give them a hug and tissue and a bottle of water you know and i can't do that through the camera um or emdr or certain therapeutic techniques you know and especially the little guys um, under the age of 10 that have adhd they can't do virtual I, I make it maybe two minutes and then all of a sudden they put the iPad or the computer down and I'm looking at a ceiling fan going hello hello <laughs> and so I can't counsel them we have a caller we have caller Robert Robert thanks for calling in welcome to moments of clarity hi Robert hi hello hi how's everyone good <laughs> are you a first time caller yeah. Um, this is my first time calling in. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, thanks. thanks for calling in. Well, here's, here's what I was um, going to talk about was uh, when the anxiety gets really bad and then you do have something trigger it and then something else happens. <laughs> And then it becomes an even worse situation. How do you handle that? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a question. That's a really good question, Robert. Um, and I've, I've, I've experienced that. I've experienced that. Uh, that, you know, one thing triggers me. And I remember I had a day back in March, I think. Uh, and it was when the pandemic was getting really bad. It was just before we locked down. Uh, and... Yeah, I got triggered by people. I was, I knew what was go what was going on with the pandemic, and people just still weren't aware of how serious it was. And uh, and I was feeling all of that, the the, the kind of the grief of that, the, the emotion of that. And then, of course, I'm in high, more hypersensitive. So then I look on my social media feed, and something, a few things on there start triggering me as well. So I'm kind of going down a spiral, and that's very difficult to, to when you're in that. It's not easy to, to kind of bring yourself out of that. Right. Uh, and well, I think well, I know what Robert's well, talking about too, because I kind of yeah. just recognized the voice. For, it took a <laughs> second. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. no, but um, panic attacks can come out of nowhere, but yeah. um, then you're comforting and you're getting anxious and then a panic attack and then trying to calm down and then something else happens and not knowing how to pull yourself out of it. So what James was saying earlier, to call a friend to try to help ground you, mm -hmm. breathing techniques, logical thinking, trying to reframe your thinking. Um, there's so many other, other tactics. If it's that bad where the anxiety is getting out of control, and I hate saying this, but medication management or even CBD, holistic organic stuff helps. Journaling is a big one. Um, discussing it and talking with a licensed therapist or um or a trusted friend that understands anxiety. Um, yep. There's a lot of things like that. Um, 
if um, if you're having a panic attack and you have something coming up that's a lot stressful, I would say put yourself first and maybe can't. it's okay to cancel events or cancel something and relax and go to your comfort place, oh, whether it's your bedroom or your beach or something. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, have, I, um, I all of that. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to ask well, you this. One of the things I've d- done was I emailed my friends um, to uh, give them instructions on how to handle my panic attacks because for me, um, they don't get what I'm going through. They're just like, oh, well, we can just wait until later. And I'm like, no, this is happening now. So... I emailed all my friends to let them know because it has gotten to the point where I'm scared to get into a car. And then I was in another car accident on Tuesday. So it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. There's so a lot going on. And you might be overwhelming yourself and not taking care of Robert. And when we feel like if you're putting everyone else first, Robert, and not taking care and not making Robert a priority, you're going to pour from an empty cup and you're not going to have anything there for you. And then by not being there for yourself, we'll make everything worse because you're expecting everybody to be there for you, but you have to learn how to be there for yourself, not be the one everyone goes to. And we'll talk later Mm -hmm. about that. We have two minutes. I have to wrap up right now, but thanks Robert for calling in. And well, thanks, thanks, James. I hope this helps, yeah. and we'll get, touch more on anxiety a little bit later. Okay. Okay. All right. Babe. Good day. Thanks for calling in. We've got two minutes, so right now I have to wrap up, James. Um, everyone, you can follow James um, Prescott, and he has a wonderful podcast, Poema. It's like poem with an A at the end. James, really quick, like in two seconds, please tell me, tell us how we can find you and listen to your podcast. Yeah, uh, uh, at James Prescott 77 on Twitter and Instagram, uh, James Prescott, um, author and podcaster on Facebook. Um, Poma Podcast is basically anywhere you can get podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, all those places. Um, and it's got a photo of me, I think, on the on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, the Wait, One minute, and I'll post all of that um, links under our live show. James, I got to say goodbye. I'm so sorry. But okay. thank you guys for yeah. listening. And Ed and the team, and we're live every Thursday and Friday from 12 to 1. Moments of Clarity with Tiffany. You can find us on youtube.com forward slash MOC with Tiffany. The team, everyone, and to all you listeners, have gotten something out of today and for the support. Can't thank you enough. Please be kind to yourself, and especially if you're a stranger. You never know what they're going through, but be kind to yourself first. And we learned that. Have a great Take day. Care, Have a great weekend. Take care. Thank you. Put in the time. You'll see how you grow. Give me a second and pause your camera for me. Don't-